So <laughs> how do you pick your projects? Because it seems like uh, not blowing smoke up your ass, but it seems like every project you work on is a f- cool ass project. Like you've not oh, worked thanks. on anything that's just been kind of like, meh. It's always stuff that seems very like buzzworthy and your star just is continually on the ascent. Do you like, is it just flipping through scripts yourself? Is it your management? Like, how do you do that? It's, uh, it's turning down a lot of indies and sometimes indies that pay good money and it's waiting for something that excites you. Um, so good example, I was shooting a pilot up in Canada, up in Vancouver in uh, November, 2016. And while I'm there, I'm having a blast working with this great group of actors, having the time of my life, getting paid to do very little work. It was a dope gig. Uh, Cause you're part of an ensemble. So it's like, <laughs> imagine, imagine getting paid the same as John Cena, but you're just part of the Wyatt family, you know, like right. that's kind of what it felt right. like. Yeah. And, and uh, I was loving it up there, but I get an email that says, Hey, you want to audition for this movie? I Tanya. And I look at it and I'm like, the screenplay is like one of the most heralded screenplays of yeah. like, the year prior. They have Margot Robbie, who is like the biggest thing right after, um, Suicide Squad and Wolf of Wall Street. And then what a dream Alice, she is. Oh Good God, the God. best. God. She's so cool. And then Alice and Janney, like, yeah, I grew up watching Alice and Janney and everything from freaking Miracle on 34th Street, Drop Dead Gorgeous, West Wing. Like, I love that woman. So, she's so great in Juno. Oh, she's so, oh, good. so good in Juno. Good yeah. in everything. And yeah, she's good in everything. So that was one of those things that I was like, I'm already happy. I'm content. I'm working a job. And, and I got kind of called up to the main, the main roster. And, <laughs> and then like, right as I'm promoting I, Tanya, right when it's about to come out, I got the audition for Black Klansman with Adam Driver and Spike mm-hmm. Lee. Yeah. And th- none of them had even seen I, Tanya. They knew nothing about me. I just had a good audition. Oh, wow. And so right on the heels of I, Tanya, I get Black Klansman. No and big deal, right? Late night with them at no, big no deal. it's just like back to back like dope people and then I'm starting to get offers from other people like I remember I think I got like an offer from um, Hawaii Five-0 that show on CBS mm-hmm. and it's not a very hip show we're living in the we're in a post Breaking Bad world we hold our television in the highest regard sure sure so like when they're tugging my shirt saying do you want a bag of money to play a character on our show for a month in Hawaii it's like, I want to do it, but my reps, my agents and managers are like, with no disrespect to Y 5 but you can't go from Spike Lee and yeah. Margot Robbie to Y 5 So suddenly my life changes overnight and I'm turning money jobs down all the time. So I started doing that straight off on Cobra Kai where they said, hey, we think you're mm-hmm. funny. We thought of a part for you. Would you do this? And once again, it was one of the things that I was going to pass on. But then I... I think I took a bus. This is like 2018. This is, I, this is back when I was still struggling for money just like two, three years ago. But like, I was like taking a bus or the train to a meeting in Culver city to meet with oh, all the brother. Cobra Kai guys. Uh-huh. And I have an iPad that's playing the episodes cause I hadn't seen the show. So I watched three episodes in a row before walking into the meeting and I'm like, I'm in love. I'm hooked. I have <laughs> yeah. to do the show. So I walk into the meeting. I'm like, we're doing the show. Doesn't matter what my reps say. We're doing it. And uh, then it turned into this big, crazy hit on Netflix, which yeah. I didn't know was going to happen. You know? Uh, so all these types of things happen where Clint Eastwood says, Hey, I need you to replace Jonah Hill in my movie. And it, someone like me is like, what the hell is going on right now? It doesn't, yeah. doesn't even feel real, but those things keep lining up and happening. So half of them are by my creative hand and I'm trying to pick and choose, but dude, there's like 50% of things that come to me out of nowhere that like, I literally just give credit to God and I'm grateful that they happen the way they do, you know? Very serendipitous. Yeah. I mean, but also, you know, it's putting in all that hard work and being immensely talented to have those skills showcased. But like you said, I mean, to go from, from doing uh, I, Tonya and not even having had that movie out before booking your next gig and people seeing how good you were in that movie is very, very cool. Um, what about uh, doing, doing kingdom? How was that for you? 
Oh my gosh, that was a crazy story. The moment, the audition, the morning of the audition for Kingdom, I was living in a two bedroom apartment in North Hollywood with three other people. Four of us were splitting a two bedroom. I'm broke as crap. I, I'm working at Five Guys, the burger place in Studio oh, yeah. City. And I'm super depressed and unhappy because I know I'm a capable actor, but I'm not working. Mm-hmm. And I'm broke as and I'm eating like 7-Eleven pizza and sushi. And I'm, I'm just living in this disgusting hellhole. And I'm in my bathroom that morning and I just say to God, I'm, I just, I'm a God guy, I believe in God. And I just said, I was like, dude, I'm dying on the vine. If you want me to go be a teacher, I'll go be Robin Williams and Dead Poets. Like I will go inspire sure. and love people and make them feel great and be an awesome teacher. But I can't keep doing this. I, I need a break. And uh, I basically said that to God and walked out. And my buddy, Chloe Lanier, she's an incredible actress. She had a big run on, uh, she won a daytime Emmy for General Hospital. But she and I were living together at the time. And she goes, uh, good luck on your audition. I'm like, I'm not going to get it. And she goes, just because you said that, you're probably going to get it. Watch. <laughs> so I go in and I read this part and they go, oh, you're reading for the bully. I said, yeah. They go, we thought maybe you'd be reading for Keith. And I said, who's Keith? And they said, that's the character that gets bullied. And I go, dude, you got to let me audition for the guy who gets bullied. That's way more in my nature than to play a bully. Sure. Uh, so I take 45 minutes at the sides. I go memorize them and I go in and I just kind of went nuts. The character was kind of crazy and I kind of leaned into it and I was like throwing <laughs> around the room and like screaming and crying and stuff, kind of like heavy actor acting. Yeah. But, um, but I did it really went for broke. And like two, three days later, I got a call and they said, you got the job. And, you know, I didn't know what the show was going to be. They said, it's a show about MMA starring Nick Jonas and it's going <laughs> to play on direct TV. Yeah. I said, that sounds uh-huh. less like a real show and more yeah. like a Mad Lib. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. What the hell is that? Like, I don't know what that is. And they're like, dude, just come and do your thing. So I showed up and I was only supposed to do two episodes, but I just improvised and made the character my own and kind of put him on the autism spectrum and, uh-huh. and leaned into some PTSD character traits. And, and I really, I just went for it, especially as a guy who hated his life working at a burger fast food joint, living with three yeah. people in a two bedroom apartment. It was like every day I showed up to set was like me trying to crawl my way out of my circumstance. Yeah. So uh, the two episodes turned into seven seven turned into 25 and I quit my day job and that show made me a working actor where I haven't had to work a day job since March of 2015. What a relief that is the day that you get to go. I'm not coming back here. (laughs) Like it is the biggest relief of all time ever. It doesn't. Oh, it's just so surreal. It's so surreal. And, and, and it sucks when I lose sight of it, which I do. Because we are, we're all human. We're all, we get to this place where we sometimes feel entitled or we're a little too expectant and it's not healthy. You know, it's healthier to be able to reflect and look back and realize like, you're not, you're not flipping burgers, dude. You used to flip burgers. But you know what? That time spent doing that, flipping the burgers, waiting the tables, grinding it out at auditions. Those are the things that make you so appreciative when things finally connect. You're like, man, I have been busting my ass, putting in this work. I mean, I remember being like that the day that I got to quit at my job waitressing. And I was like, thank God. I was was like, Uh, So I finally got a job um, working for a sports station in Toronto. And uh, there was only really like two gigs that because at the time I was like, I need to find a way to get on national television. That was just like my goal to like figure something out that was like something more substantial, something a little more concrete. Um, So there is we have much music, which is like our MTV. And then we have. Yeah. And then we have the score. Amongst other, you know, we've got TSM, which is like our ESPN, but the score did more comedic style interviews with athletes. So I was like, oh, I want to do that. I could do that. Um, So once I, you know, I finally secured that job after like all these auditions and hounding people and literally calling people and emailing people like left, right and center. And I in my the bar I worked at was actually just like around the corner from where this TV studio was. So I would always come back to work and like go back and like do my waitressing shift and then kind of clock in be like, guys, I think I got the job. And they're like, yeah, right. It's not happening. And it did drag out for so long. I was like, 
I don't think the contract is coming through what's happening. And then when it finally did, I was like, thank God. Cause my boss was yeah. like, uh, yeah, my boss was like, all right, kid, it's not happening. Not happening. Thank for you. God. Thank that, God. That it moment did. is that mo- I remember I was, I was with my buddy, Greg Renee and my buddy, Robbie Peschke. The three of us were at the Staples center in LA. We're going to a Laker piston game. I was treating them. They were in town visiting me in LA. Whenever people visited me in LA, I took it deathly seriously. Like, I'm going to take you hiking. I'm going to take you to a Laker game. We're going to go to the best movie theater. I'm going to take you to all these restaurants. Like we'll go to the beach. I was like the host host of the Mm Moses. but the night I took them to this Laker game, I got a, I got a phone call from my manager, this guy, Brian Walsh. He calls me to tell me that I've been picked up for 14 out of 20 episodes of kingdom, which was the call that allowed me to quit my job. Uh. So like they were there the moment I got the call in the Staples Center. I'm I'm by the merchandise, you know, counter and and I have them on speaker. And it's like my it's it was like a scene out of like Entourage or something where I'm <laughs> with my buddies, we find out life altering news, and we all celebrate and go nuts. And like that night was just I'll never forget that night of that feeling of like the release, like, yes. oh my God, I'm gonna be okay. Thank you, God. I'm gonna uh. be okay. That's amazing. I, I love hearing stories like that. It's so cool when that can happen. And like, yeah, in that momentum just kind of keeps building, obviously, as it has for you, which is so cool to watch. 